All right, welcome everybody to week three, day two. We're going to be talking about math today. I know that's all your favorite subject. Looks like uh, Aaron is taking five classes this summer, which is ridiculous. And Ben and Court's got two math classes. Um, so you didn't know this, but uh, game development is a math class also. Why is this thing shaking so much? Fix that. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, today we got to learn math. Um, taking trig this summer. Uh, good, because we're doing we're doing trig today. So, nice. There we go. Okay. All right. So, let's say, let's say that we are going to um, have our snowman. Do I have a tablet? I don't. Let's say we're going to have our snowman greet us when we walk in front of it. How could we do that with what we know right now? Something in that. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Um, with what you know right now, how can you have your snowman greet you when you walk in front of it? What tools do you have to make that happen? Input action use. Um, let's let's say. Uh, we don't want to make the player hit anything. Like you just walk in front of your snowman, my my penguin, for example, and uh, it says, "Hey, how you doing? What's up, buddy? Yeah, whatever." So you got your. Uh, So top-down view, you got your snowman. Mine's inside of a house, right? Uh, but we want it to like um, have like something like that. And if the player walks inside of there, then we want the snowman to go like, hi. Yeah. Or if you know more realistically, in a video game, you could have your. Um, Guards detect solid snake or something like that if you walk in front of them. Yeah, you can do it with the trigger box, sure. Um, trigger box could be done square, you know, be easy. Um, you could set up some sort of like rectangular trigger box, right? But we want it to be like a we want it to be like a more general like in front of like a 45 degree angle like that is there another alternative to using a trigger box there's always another alternative <laughs> okay um so uh another alternative would be uh the snowman is uh looking this way we could do a trace line right like maybe we can shoot a trace line like this and like this and like this or something. Is that not drawn? Yeah, weird. It's not drawing on the very edge of the tablet. <laughs> um, like that. We could do like three trace lines. And if, it, if any of those hit the player, um, we could be like, hey. Um, but, of course, you know, the problem is what if person's between the three trace lines, right? There's tutorials online for AI sensing. Yeah, uh, I talked about that yesterday in um, uh, is 50 uh, There is a AI sensing system in UE4. Uh, we're not gonna be doing that in this class. There's also a water system, which I taught last semester for landscapes, and I haven't taught this semester just because we're kind of uh, running out of time on on that. Um, but if you want to check it out, the uh, UE4, um, UE4 water system is pretty cool. Uh, if you remember my project from last semester, there's like a lake and a river and stuff like that. And it actually carves away the landscape where the water flows and stuff like that. Like it interacts with the landscape very nicely. Um, yeah, check that out. 
as well. Um, so now what I'm going to teach you guys today is one of the basic techniques. I keep like randomly hitting things with this. Okay. Um, so your basic tools in video games, like when you want to make things interactable, right? Like I'm not just talking about making a snowman that just sits there, but like you want to make a snowman that interacts with the player. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can have like a key bind or something like that, right? So, uh, so you guys were mentioning that you hit a key, uh, you do use, and then the key, the 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 snowman says hi, right? Um, you can do a trace line, and so maybe every tick the snowman is trace lining in front of it, and if it sees you, it says hi. Um, there's also like a sphere, right? Or what we call like a find radius. Um, so what you do is you can get sort of a radius of everybody around you, and then you can see if they're within like a 45 degree arc of you. Um, it's like this dead zone on my tablet now. I haven't played with it in a while. So, um, oh, you don't have to apologize for it, of course. It's very cool. Um, so, in order to... Uh, so, these are kind of like... Yeah, and then there's, uh, and there's of course, touch, right? Right? Um, so, if you walk up and touch the snowman, you can have it go, ow. And then there's overlap with the triggers, All right? So you do a box trigger, a sphere trigger, trigger. Uh, yeah. So these are kind of like uh, that's about it, right? Um, as far as you know, there, and there's variants and kind of touch and overlap are kind of variants of each other too. But these are that's about it as far as like making things interactive, right? Like. Uh, like if you uh, had a player here and they they shot, if they want to shoot a gun, um, if you have a hit scan weapon, a hit scan weapon is a trace line, right? So you click the button, it does a trace line, if it hits the snowman, snowman takes damage, right? It says, ow. If you uh, fire a projectile instead, like what we have in the first person template, then the projectile kind of flies forward and it does touch instead. So when the um, projectile hits the snowman, it uses the touch system instead of trace line. Do you guys understand? Like, there's, you know, it's about it, right? Like, you know, you, I guess you can have, I don't know, you just have it speak randomly using like think. Right, you can have every event tick, you know, have it say something, I guess. Also, also called think. Uh, so maybe every tick it says something or pauses, you know, every five seconds it just says something random. How do we do that best? Well, um, that is, you know, part of part of the thing, but. What I want to show you guys today is how to tell if somebody's in front of you. This is this is math, okay? So we've got a, a direction the snowman is looking. It's looking this way. And the person's like maybe off to the side over here. You know, they're not directly in front. If it was directly in front, you could do that with a trace line. It's pretty easy. But we want to be able to pick up everybody in like a, a radius. And so... There are these two mathematical tools, and uh, Alex might recognize this from Trig, I don't know. Uh, one of them is called the dot product. And the other one is called the cross product. Okay. And so, uh, the dot product is... This dead zone is like killing me. Com tablet right here. Okay, so the uh, the dot product the dot product is um, 
how um let's erase this person here. The dot product I'll use the rainbow ink. Um, R two vectors. It's dead sound there. Pointed the same. And this is going to give you a number from negative one to one. Okay. So, um, it's a, it works like this. If you have the snowman, and the snowman is looking this way, and you've got uh, um, a person, and the person's looking this way, they're looking the same way. And that returns one. What if the snowman, actually a snowman does more of a, let's say the snowman is looking this way and the person is looking this way. This is going to return negative one. And if the snowman is looking this way, or this way, doesn't matter, and the person is still looking this way, it's going to return zero. And so, um, and, and then it ranges smoothly between there. And what it is returning is the cosine, Alex, is returning the cosine of the angle between them. If you want to technically. Okay. So if they're looking the same way, the angle between them is zero. The cosine of zero is one. They're at 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. They're looking in opposite directions. The cosine of negative, uh, the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. Okay. So that's all the dot product is. And this is very, very, very useful in video games. Um, the uh, uh, just know that sine divided by cosine is tangent. Good luck with finding the derivative, antiderivative of negative eight cosecant uh, squared times the cotangent. Yeah, no, we're not doing any of that. Like I said, for game development, um, if you can do if you do arithmetic, it's pretty easy. So. Uh, we can actually we can actually compute this without um, without invoking trig. Okay, so as long as our two vectors are um, normalized, um, there's uses for a dot product with it with non-normalized vectors. But uh, given two normalized vectors. Two normalized vectors. That means what? What does it mean when a vector is normalized? What does that mean? You guys remember? What is? What does it mean for a vector to be normalized? A normal vector is the perpendicular vector, right? So if you've got a, if you've got a uh, triangle like this, the normal vector comes out of it like that. It's perpendicular to the surface. A normalized vector is a vector of length one. Okay. So a normalized vector, uh, this means 
length one. Okay. You guys understand? So the direction you're looking uh, doesn't need to have a magnitude, right? It should just have a magnitude of one. Okay. So uh, let's say that uh, here, uh, have these Cartesian coordinates. And this person is looking this way, which is one in the x direction, zero in the y direction. This person is looking this way, which is zero in the x direction, one in the y direction. Okay. We can compute the dot product, the dot product equation, which involves no cosines at all, um, as long as they're normalized values, uh, is this x1, x2, uh, minus y1, y2. Okay. So if we plug in the numbers here, it's x1, y1, this is x2, y2. So what is x1 times x2? You, you don't actually need to invoke C++. Um, Unreal Engine has blueprint nodes for doing trig and for doing dot product. In fact, you don't even have to um, do the equation and for rotations and all this other stuff. So what is, what is X1 times X2? There's a whole, the whole set of math libraries in Unreal Engine called Kismet, which is, does all this linear algebra stuff for you. You just have to understand the, the, the concepts. Zero. Okay, so what is x1, uh, what is y1 times y2? Zero. Good. So what is the dot product? If you look, if one person is looking to the east, one person's looking to the north, and you dot product their look vectors, what number do you get? Anything divisible by zero is zero? You just, yeah, zero minus zero. So, uh, yeah, the dot product is zero. And so remember, zero means, zero means this. The two people are looking at like a 90 degree angle to each other. Okay. Um, you don't know which way, by the way. It could be, uh, th you'd actually get the same result if the person was looking to the south, right? If the person was looking zero in the x direction and negative one in the y direction for x2 and y2, you would still get zero. Dot product is not used for telling you which, whether you're, whether somebody's to the left or somebody's to the right. That's cross product. Dot product is uh, used to tell if two people are looking the same way or if they're looking in opposite directions. Okay. So, um, um, do one more example. Uh, let's say they're both. Uh, eh. Let's say this person's looking at negative one, zero. Okay, x two, y two. Okay, what is x one times x two? What is one times negative one? Negative one. Good, Mr. Yue. At least one student is here and participating. Uh, and then <laughs> y2 times y1, 0 times 0 is 0. So you'd have negative 1 minus 0, which is negative 1. So negative 1 means the two of them are looking in opposite directions. Okay. So if you were to uh, use this in a video game, for example, uh, let's say that you have your use button, right? You, you hit E. And you do your trace line, and you discover you have hit a vending machine. Well, um, maybe you want to do something like um, make a Coke can appear. But it only makes sense if you use it from the front, right? You can't use a vending machine from the back. You know what I mean? Like, let's say that you've got this vending machine uh, object like this. And it's got, like, the display area with all the different Coke cans or whatever in it. Um, if the person, like, comes up on it, I can't really draw 3D. But if the person comes up on it from behind and hits use, it probably shouldn't produce a can of Coke, right? 
And so what you would do is you take the vending machine's look vector, you take the uh, person's look vector, and you dot product them. And if you get a negative number, that means you're looking at each other, right? Because the vending machine's looking one way, you're looking the other way. And if you do a use, which means you hit it with what you're looking at, then you're facing the, the vending machine, okay? So what you can do is say, if the dot product is negative, and, and that includes like negative 0.1 as well. If it's in any way negative, at least you're in front of it, okay? Uh, Contrawise, if you're gonna do a backstab, let's say you make an attack, you, do, you throw a trace line out, you hit the vending machine, and you wanna know if, you, if you're gonna backstab the vending machine, okay? In that case, uh, if the look vector dot product look vector is positive, that means you're looking the same way. And since you throw out a ray and hit them, that means you're behind them and you can do a backstab for double damage or whatever. Okay. So this lecture will appear for minimum four times until you graduate from city college. It is very important to try to ma master it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is, this is something called linear algebra. But this is the most um, basic, you know, part of it. And it's still it, these are like your fundamental tools. And and if you if you look at like actual like video game code, like you will you will see dot product and cross product used all over the place. Um, pull up the source code to Quake. Um, like in the weapons code for Quake. It's 177,000 uh, characters. Uh, let's see, dot product. All right, so here you see a dot product. So uh, this is for code um, to have a rocket chase a laser dot. So uh, if you've ever played uh, Half-Life, in Half-Life when you uh, Click the rocket launcher, red dot appears, and the missile will, will follow it. Uh, I implemented, I actually wrote this code um, for Quake 1, which is, came out before Half-Life, but I backported it into uh, Quake 1. And so what it does, it does a dot product. It's just using multiply, by the way. You multiply two vectors, that does a dot product. Um, the dot product is also called the inner product, and the cross product is called the outer product. I don't know. I don't know why they would... I don't know, it, whatever, they just chose the times for it. Anyhow, so that's your dot product. And then um, and then if the result is greater than 0.819, which is just a number I chose, the, the uh, bigger the number, the narrower the cone. The smaller the number, the, the wider the cone. And that's the cone that it's looking for a laser dot. If it sees it, then it locks on and, and does stuff. Uh, so it's a 35 degree cone. So 35 in one way, 35 in the other way. So you got 70 degrees total to look for look for stuff. So uh, yeah, you, you're gonna you're gonna see um, you're gonna see that all the time. Okay. Uh, so a lot of this is not clicking. I guess the simple stuff is yeah. Um, uh, so. Do you understand this, Avina? If you do, there's a dead zone. It's so weird. Okay. So uh, when I when I teach math, I try to. Um, not really get into the weeds too much. Uh, basically, the notion is, am I looking the same way? The dot product is gonna be one. Am I looking in opposite directions? The dot product is negative, negative one. And if I'm looking at a 90 degree angle to each other, it's zero. But it ranges smoothly, right? So if you wanna have a thing like this, or like uh, you want it to be like a, I don't know, 45 degrees uh, up and 45 degrees down, like kind of creating a cone like that, then um, what you do is you'd go into calculator and I would go into scientific, I'm in degrees, 45 and trig 
cosine, and I get 0 0.707, which is, uh, it was in the comment earlier, a second ago, uh, that is the number you're looking for. And so what you would say is if, if the number you get is greater than 0 0.707, then um, this person is in front of the um, the snowman. And so what you do is you take this person's position, subtract the snowman's position, and what that does, it creates a vector pointing at the person. So the, the snowman is looking ahead. Uh, we just create a vector pointing at the person, and then we do the dot product of these two vectors. And if the number is greater, uh, if the dot product is greater than 0 0.707, then we can see them, then they're in our cone. It, otherwise, we ignore them. Um, so using sine would scan up and down rather than left and right, that's right, yeah. And so the, the cross product is essentially the same thing, but using sine. And so um, with the cross product, uh, the cross product, Sounds like, I don't know, t-shirts for sale at a church or something, I don't know. Um, if, the, if the snowman and the person are looking the same way, if the snowman and the person are looking the same way, then the cross product's gonna be zero. If uh, the snowman is looking this way, the person is looking this way, you're going to get one or negative one. It just depends which one you do first. It doesn't really matter. If uh, you just have to be consistent. If the snowman's looking that way and the person is looking this way, you get negative one. And if they are looking in opposite directions, then you get zero. So. So cross product means is the person to my left or right. Okay. So, um, or, you know, am I looking to the left of the, you know, it depends on what the vectors actually mean. You can use these kind of for anything. Um, so if the snowman is looking, let's see, that way, I guess, um, then you get negative one. And again, these, these values range smoothly. And so this is just the sine of theta. And this one is x1, y2 minus x2, y1. Called scalar cross product. By the way. There's a different kind of cross product that returns a, a normal vector. Let's see if I did the math on this right. So if we have one zero one zero one times zero is zero. One times zero is zero, so we get zero. Okay. If we get if we have here, uh, let's see, that's zero one, and this one is one zero. We get zero times zero is zero minus one times one. So this would be negative one. Right. Like I said, just it just depends which one you do first, but I'll change this sign on that. If you switch which one is first, then you get the sign split. Um, okay. But that's that's the equation. That's the equation, or that's the equation. But the point is, let's say you're making a Grand Theft Auto style video game, you're driving at the player, or you're driving at an NPC, and the NPC is like, ah, it's going to throw themselves out of the way. Have you guys seen this before? In like uh, any sort of video game involving like uh, running over pedestrians or something like that? Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 had really poorly implemented code for this. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like when you're in it, you're driving around and you're about to run somebody over and they dive out of the way. Oh, 
uh, the, the internet barf. Hi. Hey. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So, cross product. You guys understand? Uh, if you're if the two people are looking the same way, you get zero. If they're looking in opposite directions, you get zero. If uh, one person's looking north, one person's looking east, you get negative one uh, or positive one. It, again, it just depends which one you're doing first. And um, okay, it's hitting somebody with your car. Cool. So let's say you're driving a car and uh, in a video game. There you go. And you're driving at a person, and the person's kind of like off to the side a little bit. Uh, it would look really bad for your video game if the person like threw themselves in front of the car. Okay, uh, I'm not streaming right now. I'm, okay. Share the screen. Yeah, it barfed. Interesting. Okay, okay try now. Um, so Cyberpunk 2077 had actually pretty buggy code for this. Uh, the game would decide you're about to run somebody over. Uh, really, really easily, and uh, the pedestrians would scream, and they would dive, and a lot of times they would dive in front of your car, and, uh, and it just was uh, this really off-putting mess. Like you're just making left-hand turn, and the game's like, "Oh, you're pointed at me," and then pedestrians would scream, "Ah!" And you're just like making a turn, like you're not really driving at them. But the game, I think, was just throwing a trace line in front of the car, and if it hit somebody, they would scream and dive randomly one way or the other. If you had your motorcycle on a sidewalk and you're just like pushing it with your foot, you know, like you're not running anybody over and, and people are ah, screaming and they start ducking and cowering and throwing themselves out of the way. And you're just like, bro, come on. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm going half a mile an hour with my foot on the motorcycle. I'm not hitting anybody. Chill. So, uh, what you want to do is, uh, is tell which way the pedestrian should dodge. Right? So if we, uh, let's look at it again from a top-down perspective. You got your car, your car is going up this way, and you got a pedestrian over here. And the pedestrians decided they're about to get run over. You want to know, am I to the right of the car or am I to the left of the car? Because that's going to choose which way you're going to dive. You know what I mean? So uh, GTA 4, I tried to make them dive into the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, Right? Do you, do you guys understand? So if you have the person's point here, that's their center point, you have the center point of the car, you can make what's called the displacement vector. By taking this position, which is x1, y1, and subtracting it, minus x2, y2. And what this does is that this creates a vector pointing at the person. And so you've got your velocity, your velocity vector is this one. You got the displacement vector, this one, and you cross product them. You normalize them and cross product them. And then that will tell you, am I to the right or am I to the left of the car? And then you can choose, am I gonna jump this way or am I gonna jump this way, okay? And so uh, that's, that's cross product, okay? And so cross product will tell you, am I to the right or to the left of a vector? And, and again, which one's positive and which one's negative is purely just a function of which one you do first. If you do this one first and this one second, then positive is to the right. If you do this one first and this one second, then negative is to the right, the person's to the right. Okay. But either way, um, you would uh, probably just use the car's orthogonal vectors to jump out of the way. So what does that mean? So every, every, uh, every object in the game has a forward vector. We, we used this yesterday without really talking about it. A forward vector is this thing here. It's the direction the car is looking. Okay. And uh, every object also has an up vector, which is coming up towards the sky, usually. It's obviously a little different if you're in an airplane and the airplanes can roll and things like that. The up vector could be pointed at the earth, but you know, conceptually, that's up. Hopefully, you guys all know up the movie. No, wait. Yeah, you guys understand? Up. And then there is also a right vector, which is this way. Okay. And some systems they call the left vector instead. 
which comes out to the left. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, you guys understand? So the car has a forward vector, which is the direction it's looking. It's got an up vector, which is sticking up towards the sky out of its hood. And it's got a right vector or left vector, which is perpendicular to the direction it's looking. So what we would do, this is, do you guys understand this? Because we did this yesterday in Unreal Engine, right? Like we used, we used the forward vector, get forward vector from the camera. That's the direction the camera is looking. If you want to get the up vector, that's um, coming up this way out of the camera. Get the right vector, it's coming out that way. If there's a left vector, coming out that way. You guys are, does that make sense to you guys? Like every object in the, in the game has a forward and up and either a right or a left vector. And you can use this to do things like, like the pedestrian, he can grab the right vector of the car. Like if I'm to the right of him, I'm going to use the right vector and jump that way. Okay. Is that sensible? Is that a, uh... okay. Okay. Um, Yeah, so let's go back to this. So let's let's uh, let's jump into Unreal Engine and see how we could go about um, maybe doing a sphere, a find radius. This is a very common way of interacting with the world. So uh, maybe our snowman, we can set our snowman to patrol or something, like in a Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid or something like that. We can have our snowman, or we can make it a friendly snowman when it sees you, it greets you, or something like that. Yeah. What would you guys prefer? Would you like it to be a hostile snowman? You know, Frosty is melted and is out for vengeance. Or uh, do you want it to be a friendly snowman? Penguin, whatever. Which one would you guys prefer? Should it be like an Oblivion, where you click on Frosty and it zooms in on his half-melted face? <laughs> Man, Oblivion had some of the ugliest... You violated the law, yeah. Uh, or in uh, Daggerfall, which is my favorite Elder Scrolls game. Uh, all the only line of dialogue the guards had was "Halt, halt, halt, halt." And so, if you if you uh, were going on a crime spree, you'd sometimes be chased by like fifty guards, all shouting "Halt, halt, halt." And in Daggerfall, you could climb. They had a climbing skill, which they removed, you know, from. Uh, uh, Morrowind, I think. Morrowind had a jump skill? Uh, that was removed in Oblivion. Like I said, they, they've been tearing, tearing things out, which is really kind of annoying. Um, but you could, like, climb up the outside of the building, and then all the guards couldn't, and so they would just gather around the building shouting, Halt! 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 At you. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Um, is Daggerfall easy to get into? Um, uh, I, would, I, would get the, uh, I would get the remake for sure the uh, unity remake of it um it's, it's easy to get into i don't know like the character creation alone like you'll, you'll see i don't know you'll see why i like it um the, the character you can spend hours in character creation um i i guess you can do that in skyrim too um but when you spend an hour in character creation in skyrim it's just customizing your appearance in daggerfall you're actually building your character there's like different stats and um, different abilities and advantages and disadvantages. You can have your character take damage in sunlight and be stronger under the full moon if you want to go for some weird vampire werewolf hybrid or something like that. Um, yeah, you know. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, yeah it, it's a thing. Okay, so let's, so you guys want to, uh, uh, hostile. Where do you get the Unity rework? Uh, it's search for Daggerfall Unity. It'll it'll come up. Uh, I think I have it on here actually somewhere. Uh, 
Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall. Or if that's the original. God Galaxy. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. I think that's actually the original. Uh, yeah, just search. Really? Really? Thank you. Um, yeah, just search for Daggerfall Unity. It's, um, yeah, it, mm, I, I don't know if I can highly recommend it. Like, it, it's a game from a different era. It really needs, it really needs a good remake. Uh, the fan remake is all right. It's certainly better than the original. But, uh, it really just needs somebody to come in and do, like, a Daggerfall 64 special edition, you know, kind of thing on it. Okay. So, let's do this. Let's do a, uh, Frosty the Hitman or something. Okay. So, Epic Games. And your homework assignment that I was going to have due today is due tomorrow. Uh, when I uploaded the video, which took three hours. I don't know what, what's going on with my internet. I think I just barfed a second ago, too. Uh, when you guys all cut off and Discord went down. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I might I might have to make a deal with the devil. Get Comcast. I don't know. When I was actually at Big Bear in a cabin in the woods, these lectures were uploading like 15 minutes. Right? Um, and on AT&T, I've got the highest tier of AT&T uh, U-verse internet here. And it is... It was three hours to upload it. And then I realized that it logged me in on a different account. And so I had to re-upload it. And then by that time, um, yeah, it was too late. So, yeah, the homework from yesterday is due tomorrow. If you have any questions about it, please ask um, on the chat channel. And uh, um, I can help you out. Okay. Because um, there was a lot of stuff we went over yesterday. The uh, YouTube description has step-by-step -step directions in it. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, there's a good set of directions in here. And then, you know, the video itself, of course, walks you through it, too. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So let's go into summer. 2021. Here we go. Comcast Internet isn't too bad. Yeah, it's just a terrible company. Like, I had a friend work uh, for them doing uh, uh, the phone center. And that has got to be one of um, one of the worst jobs ever. You know, like, at least in a country like America. You know, I'm sure people working uh, the salt mines in the Roman Empire had it worse than working for Alorica. But, um, yeah, the, you know, when, when you have a company where the, where 90% of the people quit after six months, by six months, a lot quit before then, like, you know, your company's horrible, horrible, uh, downtimes are awful. At least it is an Amazon. Yeah. I don't know. Like, uh, I've sort of re resisted getting Comcast for that reason, but with at t being sort of, um, yeah, I don't know, little blips and outages and things like that. Like, I don't know, I'm not, not a super big fan anymore. Not that I ever was. Okay, so we're here and we want, uh, here we got our penguin. Um, you know, this guy looks too friendly to be a guard. I'm just gonna have, mm, I'm just gonna leave him like that, I think. Um, Maybe I'll maybe I'll add a trigger box and just have it say hello or something. But uh, I I can't that, that that penguin's just too friendly to be to be hostile. So let's uh let's go out here and put a mannequin or something like that. Do we have a mannequin asset? We do not because we're in first person template. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm going to launch it with Games Launcher again. And the animation starter pack is um, add to project, add to summer 2021, add to project. Um, there, that was pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> and animation starter pack. Do you have a mannequin? You do. Cool. All right. So 
There we go. So what I did was I went to the library and I installed, uh, well, I went to the marketplace if you don't have it. Uh, you can get the animation starter pack and click add to project and then add it to your current project. Um, there's also the UE4 mobile mannequin. That's a different mannequin. It's got a girl mannequin also. Um, not that mannequins are really gendered anyway, but you know, whatever. So, uh, yeah. yeah, who knows. Okay, so uh, we got our mannequin here and this will be our security guard. And so what we want, and let's make it a little more interesting by having it kind of occluded by the rock here, right? So, so maybe you can try walking past the mannequin. If it sees us, it'll shout halt like a Skyrim card. Okay. And uh, because I installed the uh, animation starter pack, I can actually give this guy a animation asset. Uh, and I'll just have it do like some sort of idle. Idle pistol. Hmm. That's kind of amusing. Uh, let's pick something. They just not have a good idle aim space hip. Yeah, whatever. That's good enough. Okay, so if we hit play right now, come over here, you will see that. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. It's it's kind of a weird animation. But there you go. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Can't I can't deal with that. Uh, it's going to be reloading over and over again. Uh, idle rifle hip, maybe. Okay, so if we wanted, we can give this fellow a uh, a gun to hold if we wanted. But this isn't this isn't that lecture. This is a lecture on mathematics. The universal language makes the world go round. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Let's make a blueprint. Um, so we got this guy selected. We're going to choose blueprint add script. We're going to make a new blueprint. Uh, subclass in here for the parent class, sure. And the path I'm going to save it into is build. And this one is going to be called uh, security guard. We've got a new um, blueprint, and you can look at here. And like I said, we can give it a gun if we wanted, but uh, I have no choice in Readly. Yeah, it's fair. Um, honestly, I, I honestly wish I just put it, you know, bite the bullet and put in fiber. Um, and if AT T is not going to do it, like I don't know. A group of people in the community would get together and install it because you share the cost across an entire neighborhood like it's not that expensive probably be cheaper in the long run considering 18t charges 100 bucks a month for infrastructure that hasn't been upgraded in ages okay so what do we want to do um We want to have the security guard. Move my tablet out of the way here. Uh, we want to have the security guard. Let's say every tick, but that's um, in reality um, what you want is for your AI not to run every tick because AI can be quite expensive, right? If you have all the objects in the world with AI on them, and every tick they're doing all this kind of stuff, you're going to slow down your game. But yeah, whatever. It's a good starting point. I can add in, um, you know, checking twice a second. That's usually pretty good. 
Um, you know, once a second, once every two seconds, it's still usually pretty good. Todd Howard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I got here event tick and, uh, uh, what I want is I'm just going to start off by printing print string. Actually, would you guys like to see how to make it run only once, you know, once a second, maybe, or once every two seconds, something like that. You can do that. So snap that down there, hit play, and you can see it's spamming hello over and over again. Cool. So that is running. Simmons, would you like to see how to slow it down so it's not... Um, okay. So, uh, rather than hello, I'll have it say think. Or security think or I don't know, something like that. So what I'd like to do is have an if statement in here. And so an if statement is a branch. Right? And so I want to say if it has been at least a second since the last time I um, printed security think, then print security think. Okay. So I'm going to need to make a variable, and the variable will be a float called last thought or something like that. And so I'm going to make this a float. And so this is going to hold the time that I last thought. Okay. And uh, so after I print security think, I'm just going to set this variable here. Set the variable. And what do you guys think the, uh, the function is called to get the current time? Any guesses? How many people did it take to make Daggerfall? Ah, oh, man. Um, hmm. I'd say probably back then, it was probably going to be a team of maybe 20 to 40 people, something like that. Uh, that's just a, a really raw estimate. Anyone want to guess what the name of the function is to get the current time? Maybe more could be a localization. About 30 people, plus beta testers. There's Todd Howard right there. Anyway, no guesses? All right. If you type get time, you'll see there's actually multiple uh, functions. Get accurate real time, get actor time dilation, which is not what we want. Uh, get audio time seconds. Um, uh, which is the time that it sounds I'm playing for. Get game time in seconds. Um, get global time dilation, which again, we don't want. Get real time in seconds. Um, and then there's these timer functions. We're not, we haven't talked about timers yet. Uh, get unpaused time seconds. Get world delta seconds. Uh, probably we want to get game time in seconds. Because okay. if you pause the game, then um, then the timer stops running. So uh, this here is going to set a variable called get time in seconds. And right now the branch is always true. So it's just going to be updating this variable every frame. So what we want to do is say if the current time is greater than the last time plus one. Okay. So how do we do that in blueprints? Well, uh, so if the current time is greater than so we're going to do float versus float. Uh, so if the current time, and again, this will be get game time in seconds. Um, we're going to compare that to last thought. And we're going to make another variable called um, time between thinks. Sorry, variable naming is hard. <laughs> so time between thinks, if you want to give it a default value, you have to compile it and save it. Then you can set a default value over here. And I'll set it to one second. So there will be one second between thinkings. Okay. Every time you think, it'll do a one second delay. So I'm taking the current time, or the, I'm, I'm getting, nope, 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 nope. That's not quite yet, right? We need to get this variable here. So last thought 
plus time between things. Not you. I'll do a plus in here. Okay. So I'm going to take the last time we thought, so maybe 100 seconds into the game, something like that. So the last time that we thought was 100 seconds into the game, the next time we could think is 101. This time between things is one. So that should do it. So we get the current time uh, and we compare it against uh, the last time we thought and add one to it. So if the current time is 100 and the last time we thought was 100, it's not gonna do anything. So it's gonna be false and drop out. So every, every frame it's gonna check the time, check the time, check the time over and over again until it's been a second past uh, the last time we thought then it's going to print security think and it's going to update the uh, variable last thought. So if we do that, hit play, security think, and then every second it's doing one more security think. You see that up there. Okay, I'll screenshot that and send that to you guys. Control Shift S. Uh, again. So that's that's a uh, that's a pretty simple and straightforward way of um, limiting um, how often something runs if you're using event tick. So um, that's uh, yeah pretty easy. Uh, rather than doing that, you can set up a timer. Like I said, in Unreal Engine, there's always different ways of doing things. So you can make it you can spawn a timer, and the timer would fire every second. For example, same general idea. A uh, little less, you don't have to do quite so much logic on it. You can just set a timer with a one second. You can set a repeating timer with a one second uh, period on it, uh, in, uh, duration between invocations. All right, so now we're going to switch this bad boy out here. So rather than doing security think, security think, what we're going to do is we are going to see if the player is... Um, uh, visible to us and we'll start with that and then we will see if we will see if um, they're in a 45 degree angle okay so uh, how do we see if a person's visible uh, we do a trace line right so we're gonna do a line trace by a channel And so the start of it is going to be our position. So we will get, I wonder if that works. No, not quite that clever. So we'll get you, and we are going to get our location. So I'm going to get our location, and then I'm going to get the location of the player. So um, get player pawn uh, player index zero. It's a single player game. It's always going to be zero. Um, and so we are going to get the world location. Can we not do that? Gonna get the player character, get the root component, which is the that node right there, and it's going to may or may not be exactly what we want. Um, uh, but it we'll 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 draw the trace line and then um, gonna draw it for what is it five seconds by default, 
and we'll see we'll see if this works okay adding the mannequin to your project's not compatible to 4.26 even though it is um yeah sometimes uh if it's if it was saved in a previous project version you have to go through the import process and update it okay so what i've done here is i'm doing a line trace a trace line starting at the ma the mannequin uh starting at the mannequin's uh location which is going to be You, you, uh, no. Why is it not showing the? The origin, but um, wherever the origin is. Okay. So uh, there we go. So that is saved, and let's go ahead and run it. And uh, you can see it is uh, shooting a ray. Uh, yeah, it's coming out of the floor, which is a little weird. Uh, there we go. We got a hit. So it's coming at me here. And so every second it is uh, drawing a line. See, see where the origin is right there. Um, so we should probably bump that up a little bit, right? We should have it probably coming out of its eyes because it, you know, you're your feet typically are not used for vision detection, right? Um, and you can get into a situation like this where like the feet can actually see you and the head head maybe can't, right? And it's kind of shooting at our feet as well. So, okay. And uh, I don't know if it's actually hitting anything either. So, um, um, a couple different ways of doing that. Uh, Let's go back into security guard and uh, we can just mm, we can add something to it I guess uh, add component I guess the easiest way of doing this is to add uh, scene, and I'm going to call this like uh, I spot something like that. And I'm just going to put it up where the mannequin's eyes would be if it had eyes, which it doesn't. Um, and uh, I really should attach it to the. Uh, I really should attach it to the uh, head, um, the head of the uh, the mannequin, but this this will do well enough, I guess. Okay, so uh, rather than having it come out of the floor because the skeletal mesh component its origin is down here, I just created a new thing. It doesn't have it doesn't have any uh, doesn't draw anything on the screen. You might you might have to quit out in order to to add it. I don't know. Okay, so what I'm going to do is rather than getting the location of the skeletal mesh component, I'm going to get the location of eye spot. And then if we save this and compile this, we should see yeah, good. So it's coming out of its face now. You notice that the trace line ignores itself. Right? And if I go behind the rocks, uh, the green means uh, you, you can see where the point of uh, intersection is. It's red up until it hits something, and then it's green thereafter. And I don't know if it's quite hitting me because I, I don't know if I, I don't really have a body. 
<laughs> so uh, we might have to make some allowances for that. Um, target root component. Uh, player character. We might have to do a little, little bit of uh, magic. Um, I got the UE4 Mannequin Mobile. Uh, I've used that one before, um, but the Animation Starter Pack is the one that I installed. It comes with a mannequin, um, and uh, you might you might need to quit out of your project and then um, install it when it's not open. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and pause for a second and let you guys work on that so you don't miss what I'm doing here. So uh, let's go ahead and take a five minute break while you guys get those assets installed. And then uh, uh, I'll come back in five, okay? All right, so um, uh, let's, take a, let's take attendance too. I'll pause the recording. Again. Okay, so, um, so it's gonna currently do a trace line from the right spot to us. Uh, we really, uh, it's really not exactly the, um, uh, it's not, it's not hitting anything because if, if you, if you look at the player, the, the player actually doesn't have a body, so it doesn't hit anything. So rather than looking at, um, uh, rather than looking at, um, the hit objects, I'm going to drag out from output hit here and choose break hit result. It's really the only thing you can do with it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the trace fraction. I'm going to see, um, did it, did it get to the end? <laughs> and, uh, uh, actually maybe I'll, maybe I'll print the, maybe I'll print the, um, the name of something we hit. That's a good, that's a good debugging thing. Print string. So I actually just want to verify that it is not hitting the player. Uh, so the hit actor, we're going to print their name. And so I just drag from hit actor into the string and it automatically does this for us. So if I compile that and save it, what's going to happen is it's going to tell me rock or whatever. Uh, there you go, SM rock 2, SM rock 2, you're hitting the rock, hitting the rock, hitting the rock. And then it's hitting the cube. And then if it hits me, nothing because I don't have a body. So, uh, so what? Rather than rather than uh, the the hit actor, it's not hitting anything. What I want to know is if the trace end is uh, the actual endpoint over here. So, or the di is that as a number from zero to one? Uh, da -da -da -da. Distance from the trace start to the location of world space. Um, time of impact along the trace direction. One if there's no hit. Okay, so if there's no hit, um, then we'll do that. So if this is greater than or equal to um, the floating point numbers, you never want to use equality. I mean, I guess one would work. Um, but it, it's, it's a bad habit to, to get into. So if it's above 0.99, uh, so if it's above 0.99, branch, uh, so time is how far along the trace line it was until it hit something. And if we do that, we will say uh, hit player, oops, print string. Hit player. Otherwise, we will not do anything. So if we're over here, there you go. And so it's hitting me now. Hit, hit, hit. If I go behind the rock, it doesn't see me. If I come over here, hit player, hit player, hit player, hit player. And so you can see the trouble is, is that even when I'm behind even when I'm behind it, it's saying it can see me, All right? So now, now is the time to um, 
do the linear algebra. Okay. Put a custom collision box channel around yourself and use that. I could. Yeah. There's there's all sorts of different ways to to do things, but um, if it doesn't hit anything, if it's drawing from its position to my position, then it can see then then there's an unobstructed line of sight between us. It's kind of backwards from how you normally do it. Normally, you draw a line and see if you hit something. But in this case, I'm drawing a line and seeing if I didn't hit something. Yeah. Because uh, if you don't hit anything, then that means there's no obstruction between the uh, the mannequin and myself. Okay, so let's see how this works. So uh, the first thing we need to do is, is create something called a displacement vector. So uh, this is a vector... Um, showing how to get from point A to point B and is made by subtracting B minus A. And so we can do that. Uh, so this is our location. That's B. This is the uh, mannequin's location. So we are going to do a vector minus. That is our displacement vector there. And so that is a vector from um, from the mannequin towards us. It's showing us how far away we are from the mannequin. And what we need to do is normalize this. And so this is going to create a unit vector. Um, normalize it to get the direction. Okay, so we just want to know what direction is the player from us. And then we can compare that using the dot product um, or cross product, depending on which one we want to do, and see is it in front of us, is it left of us, right of us, whatever. So this, this is going to create a normalized vector. And uh, uh, did you know that shortcut, by the way? Uh, Logan, you select two things. You can hit Q, and then it straightens out all the uh, it straightens out all the lines between them. It's pretty pretty rad. Yeah, maybe not in that case. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, if you want things like aligned, uh, you can select them and go to align uh, alignment align left and then they'll kind of line up nicely so if you're like me and you want to have a nice tidy blueprint it's, it's a really nice thing okay so we've got this is a um, if we go back into here this, this is the direction uh, it's it's a normalized vector pointing from the security guard towards us so we created the displacement vector by subtracting our position minus their position and that that gives you a vector like if we're if we're 100 miles to the east then the displacement vector would be pointing east 100 miles it, it shows you how far the security guard would have to walk to get to us that's the displacement vector um and so what we do is we normalize it so it becomes a unit vector and that's just the direction we're in and so what we're going to do is we're going to compare the direction we're in versus the direction the security guard is looking and uh and then if we're within a 45 degree cone um, we're going to have the guard, you know, yell halt or something like that. Okay. So we've got this and then we've got the, okay. So, uh, we are going to do a dot product. We're going to dot product it with the guards forward. And hopefully this guy's looking in the, uh, 
So he, it, why does it not have? Why can I not click on this? So the X direction is this way. Okay. Oh, because it's the root. It's the root code. That's why. Okay. Uh, well, let's just try getting the forward vector and see what we get. Uh, we might have to rotate these things or something like that, but hopefully um, forward is this way. <laughs> you don't know, forward is not always forward. It just depends which way the the, uh, the mesh is rotated. Okay, so we're gonna get the forward vector. Uh, let's see, eye spot maybe. Yeah, we could do it this way. And then we can just rotate the eye spot if we need to. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So eye spot and we are gonna get the forward vector. Uh, view and so the direction the eyes are looking basically and then we're just going to print the result here so um, let's just start off by print the string and let's just print the result of this and so this is going to give us a number from 0 to 1 assuming the forward vector is normalized which uh, hopefully it is um, and then we're just going to print the number so what we're doing here is we're printing out the the result of the dot product, and this is a very common thing um, we do because um, we want to see what kind of numbers actually make sense for it to see us. So right now it can't see us. We come over here. The dot product is negative. Okay, so the um, the thing needs the eye spot. I guess needs to be rotated. What do we got here? It needs to be rotated ninety degrees. Okay. Easy done. So I'm going to come up over here, choose the eye spot, and I'm going to rotate it. Usually X is the forward vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. And then you can see the red line is the direction it's looking, and that should be relatively correct now, I think and hope. So I, I rotated its eyes 90 degrees inside of its body like an owl. <laughs> And so now, yeah, okay, so now if we're in front of it, we're getting one or very close to one. And then as we walk off to the side, you can see that the number will start decreasing. And uh, once I walk behind it, then the numbers go negative, right? When I'm right behind it, it's negative one. When I'm off to the, uh, if the eyes are a little bit in front of its head, whatever. Uh, when I'm, uh, when I'm on one side or the other side, it's very close to zero. You see that? Uh, here. It's close to zero when I'm to the left or right of it. Um, in front here, it's a high number. Okay, so like I said, dot product returns a number from negative one to positive one. Negative one's directly behind, positive one's directly in front, but it, you're gonna get a float, it's a, it's a number. You're very rarely going to actually see a one come out of this, right? You have to be, I don't know, very lucky to actually get a one. So what we want to do is actually just kind of walk around and, and just, uh, and this is very common in video games. You just kind of print the numbers and you just kind of look at them. And you're like, all right, I guess the guy should probably see me there, right? Like, it would be weird if he couldn't see me. So my, my original plan of having like a 45 degree cone doesn't seem right. Um, even this, like... I feel like he should be able to see me, you know. Uh, maybe here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe if it's just positive. Uh, actually, yeah, maybe I need to rotate this a little more. Uh, yeah, you know, even here, like, I feel like I'd be in its peripheral vision. So maybe I'll just say if it's positive, like if, if the dot product is positive, then it can see me. That seems that'll, that'll give a 180 degree arc. Okay. So from like, uh, uh, from like out here all the way around to here, 180 degree arc. And, and this is something like, you just have to play the game. And, and what I'm doing is I'm just printing this is a habit I, I really want all of you guys to get into rather than just like trying to create a blueprint like this wholesale like all at once you you need to get into the habit of building 
a little bit at a time and printing the result. And do you, do you see how I'm doing this? Like every time I add something, I print the result and just look at it or I set a breakpoint. It depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, so you're kind of behind, what was the name of the I spot component? Uh, I just called it a scene component. You could, you can actually add like a, a mesh and just not give it a mesh. Um, I just put, um, I just put something on it that doesn't have, that doesn't draw. <laughs> I'm just using it really to just um, show where the eyes are, and that's that's a fairly common technique um, in in these kinds of things. You just add something and then just move it into place. Now that place in the world is labeled, right? Uh, I, I I didn't technically need it. I I could have um, like gotten our world location for the root and then added um, added numbers to it. Until and just guess numbers until it came out correct, but uh, it's just easier to do it this way. Just I, I'm just naming a point basically. It's a scene component. Um, so. uh, if I really want to do it correctly, I would actually attach it to the skeleton. Um, uh, skeletons um, can have attachment points added to them, and then it would actually then as the thing animated, the the eye spot would actually move with it, which is the more proper way of doing this. But I'm not going to worry about. It. That, that's a whole other lecture on how to do that. We have to go into animations and skeletons and skeleton meshes and things like that. Um, okay, but I hope you guys understand this. Like, I, I'm, I'm not just making everything at once. I make a little bit and then I print it and, and I make sure that it works. You know, like, because I, I discovered like my eyeballs were rotated 90 degrees the wrong way. It was like an owl where the eyes were like just like this. You know, they're just facing at a 90 degree angle. So. Um, so I rotated, I clicked on the eye spot and I rotated it at 90 degrees and now it works R relatively well. Um, if you just try making it all at once, it's, it's not going to work probably. Okay. So now that we've got this, uh, all we need to do is say if the result is greater than zero, which is pretty easy. Um, wait, uh, no. if the dot product is greater than zero, then print I see you branch. Well, if the player is in front of the guard, and this uh, this maybe we should promote to a variable, and this will be like a spot dot product value. I don't know. It's not a great name. Uh, spot um, sensitivity. I don't know. It's not a great, not a great name. Um, but if you change this from a number from negative one to positive one, it'll control the cone of vision that the uh, the guard has. Um, yeah. And so, if we are in front of the guard, then we will, for now, we'll just print. Halt, halt, halt. Right. So it's trying to look at me, trying to look for me, trying to look for me. Halt, 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 halt. And if I go behind it, it stops saying it. Then once I get in its peripheral vision and here, there you go, halt, 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 halt. Once I get behind it, I think the eyes need to be rotated a little bit, but uh, yeah, there we go. So right there, we're now it's peripheral vision and it can see us. 
the eyes are a little bit in front of the face, which makes it a little weird, but there you go. So there we have, uh, there we have that. Um, we actually make it play a sound if we wanted. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can find a halt sound. Stop that. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> that'll work. That'll work. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Download. Uh, I'll put it on my desktop. It's in WAVE format already, which is nice. That's why I like using that website. And then I am going to import you. Add import. Yeah. Uh, go up to the desktop and import the stop sound. Stop. And uh, it was a sound wave. Uh, I probably should create a cue from it. Um, I should probably go over that, I guess. So you, you can import a wave file, and they if you double click on it, um, it brings up like this uh, plaque. Wonderful, wonderful. We're doing this again. Okay. Uh, so you can set options on the wave file, like if it keeps looping. Stop, stop, stop. Um, uh, but really, when you play a sound in Unreal Engine, you um, you want to turn it into a sound cue, um, which which offers more options. Um, so you right click on it. Oh my gosh, it's doing this stupid thing again. Um, okay, you right click on the sound. I, okay, there we go, it's back. Uh, you right click on the sound, choose create cue. And then this will be called guard stop cue. And the sound here is going to be called guard stop wave. Okay. And so if you double click on the cue, you can see there's actually a note editor for it. And um, there's all sorts of really interesting things you can do with sounds. Uh, if you want to get into that, um, you can add reverb and uh, all sorts of cool stuff on it. Um, uh, I'll make it louder, maybe volume times two. Um, um, yeah, I'm not going to mess around with it too much, but um, you can you can add, there's a whole note editor kind of thing like that for that. And then over here, I am going to, oh my gosh. Uh, I'm, rather than play, printing a string, I am going to play a sound. Play. All right, I'm just gonna reboot um, Unreal Engine again, sorry. Uh, I don't know why it's doing this. I've never, I had never seen that bug prior to this class. Now it does that black window thing and it does it on my laptop and it does it on my PC, so. Um, I think it's just a problem with the editor. July sale is here. Great. Uh, uh, summer 2021. Reboot. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with that. There is a 4.27 preview up. I've thought about installing it. Um, but I don't know. It seems like an opportunity to have even more bugs in it. So, okay. So I'm going to come up here into Security Guard. And oh no, now everything's tiny. It's fantastic. It's no longer doing the UE scaling from my 4K resolution. Cool. All right, so I'm going to drag in the um, uh, queue I just created, snap this to the left side. So, guard stop queue. Uh, 
Uh, no, actually. Let's do this. So we're going to play a sound. Like you do a line said by the Queen's Guard. What, which one's that? Uh, play sound at location. I can do it. Yeah, that's fine. Play sound at location. That's fine. All right. So select asset. Guard stop queue. No, I just clicked on that by accident. And the location is going to be my location. So um, the location of the I spot. That seems like a good spot for the sound to come out of. And we compile it, save it, and hit play. And I'll, I'll need to turn off those trace lines once I'm done with this. I don't know if that's coming through for you guys, but it's it's saying stop, 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 stop. And if I go behind it, nothing happens. Okay. Stop. <laughs> okay, so that's that's how you would do a security guard. Okay. And uh, rather than having it just say stop, you can. Um, for a penguin like this, you can have it say, hello, how are you? You know, because it seems like a very friendly penguin. Um, or you can have the thing start shooting you, things like that. You can play an animation. Um, um, you can have it rotate to face you. Um, maybe I can show that. And then as you run around it, it'll continue rotating to, to face towards you, uh, unless you can get behind it somehow. Maybe I'll show that next. Um, or I can have it start firing, and those lasers you see would actually be real lasers. Um, we can go into Niagara and talk about how to do particle effects. You can have guns coming out. Uh, we've got, we got uh, 40 minutes left. What would you guys like to see? Would you like to see how to rotate the guard to face you? Would you like to see how it could... Um, uh, how you could attach a gun to it, um, damage the player, um, it's a lot of things, there's a lot of directions we can go from here. What, what would you guys like to see? Um, we could import a better asset than a mannequin, but um, those assets could be quite large. Um, did I add one? Hmm. What you guys like to see? I wanted to see how it can move to the player's location as if it was following them. So that involve um, a nav mesh. Nav meshes are kind of uh, they break fairly easily, but um, rotate and face you. Yeah, let's start by having it just rotate, and then um, we'll, then we'll do a then we'll do a um, a nav mesh. Okay. Um, all right. Where was I? Build. A security guard here and event graph. Okay, all right. So it's gonna play halt, and then um, we want it to rotate, um, rotate, uh, hmm. rotate vector on axis, unrotate, uh, invert rotator, find look at rotation. <sighs> You make rotation from axis, scale rotator, get right, get up, get forward, rotate vector, rotate vector, uh, get rotated. Mm. Let's see, it's an invert.
Logan, do you remember the name of it? To rotate to face something. Uh, I know it's called in Quake. Let's see. Uh, it around the axis and the angle and yeah, we can do that um, um, let's see if we have a find look at rotation by rotation of an object at start location I think that's it okay find look at find a rotation for an object at start location to point at target location that's one okay okay so Starting location is here, us, and the ending location is here, the player. So the security guard is the start, the player is the end, find look rotation, find a rotation for an object to start location, point target location. Okay. And then we are going to, was it yaw? Um, <laughs> yaw. Let's see, was it pitch? Roll and then this is yaw. Okay, so we're gonna yaw. Okay. Um, mm -mm -mm. We're not doing a player stuff. Create yaw pitch vector. Uh, 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 okay, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna rotate it. <coughs> Quaternions. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to be a rotator. Yeah, okay. We'll pull it from that. And um, okay. um, set absolute rotation. Rotation, set rotation rate. Hmm. Let's do this. Set to mesh component. And we are going to set the rotation on it. Not an area light actor, set import rotation. Rotation rate. Scene component, set absolute rotation. Scene component, uh, static mesh, it's a relative rotation. Uh, set actor rotation. Okay. So we're going to set the rotation of it. Uh, it's the root node, I guess that works. Oh. Okay. okay, so we're going to set the rotation of the root actor. Uh, to be this rotator here, and I'm probably going to want to change it, um, but we'll just try that for now. All right. you, you might have seen how many different nodes there are for doing rotation stuff. Just make sure you're doing the right one. Okay. <laughs> so it's 90 degrees off. Interesting. Uh, remember how I said the uh, the model wasn't looking ahead? Uh, you see how the the red uh, the red arrow here is off to the side. That's supposed to be the forward vector, right? So that, that's you know um, that that's a thing. So we could fix this a couple different ways. Um, easiest way maybe to just rotate. Now we can't rotate because of the root node. Um, Uh, we can just mess with the results here. Okay, so we've got find look at rotation. Uh, so we're just gonna yeah, let's get that back. Okay. So let's 
so we are going to break the rotator. And so that's going to give us how much we need to roll, pitch, and yaw. The only thing we care about is yaw, actually. Um, these things are going to be uh, zero, because we actually don't want it tilting up and tilting back. Or do we? Probably not. We don't want it rotating sideways or the other way. We just want it yawing. This is yaw. That's yaw. Roll is doing that. Pitch is looking up or looking down. Yaw is like you're spinning in the chair. Okay. And that's usually what you want to mess with anyway. So brake rotator, and then uh, we want to just set these to zero. Um, but the yaw, if it's off by 90 degrees, let's just try adding 90 to it. And if that's wrong, we will subtract 90 from it. <laughs> or we could go into the mesh editor and fix the Because the mannequins, for whatever reason, are often... Um, not looking in the direction they say they're looking. So uh, this is a common approach that we take, which is called break and make. So when you break something, it splits uh, it splits it into its component parts. So for example, when you break a hit result, it splits the, the output structure into all the different things that go into it. If you break a, uh, a position vector, it gives you the X, Y, and Z. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm breaking it into the roll pitch and yaw, which is how much it needs to transform to look at the target. I'm adding 90 to the yaw, which may or may not be correct. It might need to be negative 90. Who knows? And then I'm going to make it. So this um, breaking into its components, doing something with one of the components, and then putting it back in. Uh, I could hook these up if I wanted. I probably don't ever want it to roll or pitch, but you know, I'm just going to put it in there just to show you guys what it'll look like. Is it? It's going to look weird, but it's educational. So. And then uh, after I've got all this stuff done, where I've kind of figured out what I need to do to rotate uh, to look at the player, then I'm going to set that to be the rotation of the player. And it's going to snap to there. A better way of doing it is to set a maximum angular velocity and give it an angular velocity so it rotates towards uh, the target rather than immediately, immediately, it's going to just rotate immediately to look at the player. But this might show you like a little bit of what goes on with that. Okay, so um, here we go. So it's yeah, it's completely backwards. <laughs> it's a shy security here. You see how it's it's rolling? It looks a little weird. Okay, so we need to subtract ninety instead of adding ninety. Okay. Compile, save. Yeah, it's like tilting sideways and it looks really weird. Oh, that's interesting. The ball was actually blinding it. So maybe it couldn't see me. Yeah, yeah, the, it, the, the trace line was blocked by the ball. That was kind of funny. It looks weird, but it works. Yeah, it, yeah, but I don't want it to look weird. So rather than having a roll or a pitch, I'm just going to set those to zero. So all it will ever do is yaw. And this is very common in a first person shooter. You just, um, you have things, the characters are always upright. <laughs> they don't tilt forward, they don't tilt backwards. You might draw it that way, like if somebody's looking upwards, you might have their, you might have like a, a, a blend space or whatever where they, you know, appear to be looking up. Um, but in reality, you, you rarely have the whole thing rotated like that. It looks very weird. Like Michael Jackson doing the, um, you guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, like this thing. It looks a little weird. Okay, so here we go. And so now it won't it won't roll or pitch. It'll just yaw towards us. Okay. If I 
come up behind it, then it doesn't see me. But if I'm here, then it ro then it rotates to face me. Okay. So that's called set actor rotation to change the rotation of something. You can change the translation, the rotation, and the scale. Um, you know, using using blueprints, and it's just like um, these three tools up here. Um, that's the that that was the node that I was trying to remember the name of. Find look at rotation, uh, which rotates uh, it rotates you to look like if there's a direction of something, then it then it tells you how far you need to rotate to be able to look directly at it. And then we had to correct for the fact the mannequins rotated ninety degrees off from where they should be. Which is, again, a fairly common bug to correct for. Uh, if I was doing this for realsies, I'd probably just modify the mesh itself and spin it so that it was looking looking down the x-axis, which is normal. Uh, would you be able to decrease the tick delay to make the turning smoother? Uh, decrease it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, but that's... Again, this is not it, this is not the, um, the, the way I'd do it, um, exactly. I, I, would, uh, I would give it an angular motion and have it rotate towards something every frame. Uh, yeah, sure, let's do that. So, uh, time between thinks, uh, zero. And then I'm going to disable place sound at, rotation, at location, because that's gonna sound uh, dumb. Hold, 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 hold. Stop, 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 stop. Um, and now every frame it'll update. So you can see it's spitting out tons and tons of trace lines. Um, and as I walk around it, you'll see it smoothly rotates to face me. I can't get away from it. Can't get away from it. Can't get away from it. Go around the thing here. Oh, it spotted me anyway. Let's see if I can break line of sight with it and maybe Sneak around from behind. See, it's still trying to see me, but it can't see me. It's not rotating though. Nope, it spotted me again because I was still within its peripheral vision. So we should probably put in like a maximum view distance or something, so it can't it can't see you past a certain length. Do you guys want to see how to do that? Okay, so if you want to. If you want to um, find out how long a vector is, um, in this case, the displacement vector, the displacement vector is the subtraction of the two positions. So I get the location of the player and subtract from it the location of the guard. Um, that's a displacement vector. That's how far we are away from the guard and in what direction we are. So what we can do is just get the length of it, vector length, map set string no 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 vector length thank you and so um so this is um how far we are from the guard and that's the length of the displacement vector Does that make sense? Okay. And so all we have to do is say if that length is greater than maximum spot distance, which is going to be a variable we'll make, Make a variable here called uh, max spot distance. So it can't see you when you're further than, I don't know, 50 meters or something like that. I don't know. So this will be a float, and you have to save it and compile it to have the, uh, the default value appear over here. Uh, uh, yeah, 50 meters, 30 meters, 10 meters, 30 meters. Yeah, let's do 30 meters. Okay. Uh, yeah, 30 meters sounds about right. And so if we are um, more than 30 meters away, we don't even need to do the line trace. So I'm going to need to...
move this stuff out of the way. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. And so, uh, there, and then come in here and do a branch. And if the displacement vector, uh, so if the displacement vector is greater than, or no, if it's less than, so if the displacement vector is less than the max spot distance, then continue. Uh, only do trace line if the player is within 30 meters. Okay. So max spot distance is set to 30 meters. Remember the units are centimeters. And um, the distance between us and the player is the vector length of, uh, this is all, uh, looks like spaghetti. Um, but that's the uh, that's the idea. Uh, can I reorder this? Maybe put this down here. If we do it now, then uh, you'll see that when we're far away, it's not drawing the line at all. When we get within 30 meters, it does it. Once we're further than 30 meters, it stops. And then I can come over here, and when I'm within 30, it's being occluded by the rock. I can cut up, oh, it saw me. All right. So I'll come over here and break line of sight with it. And you see how it's not rotating to face me anymore? So I can come over here and sneak around it this way. There we go. And so you can see it's now facing away from me, and I can I can sneak up on it. Even though it's doing the trace line, it's not spotting me because I'm behind it. So now if I get into its peripheral vision, it'll immediately snap to face me. And then now it'll it'll track me smoothly every frame. Okay. All right. Uh, so vector length is used to tell how you know the vector length of the displacement vector is how far away you are from it. Um, <clears throat> the normalized displacement vector is used to determine direction, and like the direction, not how big, just the direction. And um, and then you do dot products to with its look vector to see if you're in front of it. And the cross product can be used to determine if you're to the left or to the right of it. Um, you can then rotate, uh, you can rotate it to face using that thing there. Find look at rotation is how you, uh, um, determine how far you need to rotate to get something. Um, place sound, we're not doing right now, but you can do that as well. And then set the rotation to, to face. Um, so that's that's a very basic AI. Uh, we got 20 minutes left. Let's maybe start talking about nav meshes. Um, so, um, hmm. Maybe we can We'll play an animation for it to be like a uh, shooting or something like fire and fire rifle from the hip, fire rifle from the iron sights, and I'll have it only shoot. Uh, 
Maybe I'll have it shoot if you're within 10 meters. How does that sound? It's so like if you're within 30 meters, it'll rotate to look at you, and when you get close to it, it'll start shooting. How does that sound? Let's make a new variable. Call it max fire distance. And so if, um, how far we are away, if it is, how far we are away, if it is less than the max fire distance, you notice that I'm using less than and less than or equal to interchangeably. That's because when you're working with floats, they're pretty much the same. Um, sometimes you'll get exactly one, uh, like for time here, it might give you exactly one. Uh, most of the time, like you saw with the dot product, like you don't usually get one, you get 0.9997 or something like that. So whether or not you use less than or less than or equal to, eh, kind of usually doesn't matter unless it's a situation like that where you'll get exactly one. But even still, I use greater than or equal to 0.99 simply because um, it's a float. And I don't, I don't trust floats to ever be an exact value. So I'm going to say if the, if the, uh, if the player is less than or equal to 10 meters away, uh, max fire distance, I need to give it a value, I think, right? Compile, save, and uh, set max fire distance to be 10 meters away. Then we will, um, you. So then our skeletal mesh component is going to uh, play the firing animation. Um, Okay, so we need to put a branch in here. Like that. So if they're within 10 meters, we're gonna play the firing animation and maybe play a sound as well. Play sound at location. Eh, yeah. And we will get our location here. And we'll play the, sure, it's going to do this very rapid fire, but whatever. So compile, save, max fire distance is 10 meters. Okay, and if, it, and if they're more than 10 meters, but they can see them, then maybe we will play different animation, play animation. Um, so rather than being idle, we're going to be like, um, uh, like aiming or something. So we'll play an aim animation, aim iron sights. Okay, okay so, um, and then we'll play stop. <laughs> okay. Um, I should probably put in another, I should put in one of these things here um, to cut down on how many sounds we're gonna be getting. Uh, or, you know, I'm just gonna, I'll just put time between things back to back to a second so it doesn't spam us with you know 60 explosions a second which might be a little overwhelming compile save and notice how when i'm building this i get it working i don't try to make the entire blueprint i just get it working then i add in one more thing and then i add in one more thing over and over again okay so ooh, did it crash ooh, ooh. did it crash Looks like a crash. What happened here? That's cool. Hmm. That's fantastic. At least I saved it. Hmm. It is not responding. Look at that. Um, all right, well, let's force quit it, I guess. Um, die. All right. Wonder if. Huh. Wonder if it was the animation that caused it to crash. Try running it one more time. Let's see if it crashes it again. I uh, did not detect. I had auto saves. Yes, we will restore the selected. Cannot be successfully checked out. Okay, whatever. All right. So 
Um, one asset opener was open last time. Open it up. Okay, so we, we have all the stuff saved. That's cool. Uh, new anim to play. Okay, skeleton mesh component. Skeleton mesh component is a skeletal mesh. And it has an animation on it. Skeletal mesh is SK mannequin. Use animation asset. Um, yeah, I wonder if it's because of the animation mode. Uh, it might not like changing the animation. <sighs> hmm. Alright, well, save. <laughs> Let's try running this again. Okay, so over here, and let's see if it crashes. Yep, crashes. So I think I think uh, the way I have it set up right now, I can't change the animations on it. That's odd that it would crash though. Well done, Unreal Engine. That's some uh, professional <laughs> professional game enginery right there. Or if you change the animation on something. We'll take that out, I guess. So, uh, yeah. set animation on it and see if that see if that makes a difference all right so we'll set the animation to be was it fire iron sights fire rifle iron sights okay and then if we are further away we will set animation to be aim iron sights So if we are within 10 meters, then it will play the firing animation and play the explosion sound. Uh, actually, I don't even have those hooked up, do I? So that wasn't the crash. <laughs> yeah, might as well hook them up. They're probably not going to be the source of crash. Um, and the location these sounds are playing at, of course, are um, the location of the eyeball. Okay, so... Um, Yeah, if we're within 30 meters, it'll do iron sights, or within 10, it'll do uh, firing. Okay. Then, of course, the UE is now unscaled as well. And let's see if that will cause it to crash. Yep. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So we, we knew the better way of doing animations than apparently the, the cheap and easy way of doing it doesn't work without crashing. All right. Um, so we put up security guard back up here. Actually, let me verify that it is the animation. I'm going to delete the animations and just do the, um, just do the sounds because it's possible. Like, I don't know, I might have like a division by zero in here or something. So I am going to pull these animations out. Just uh, say if uh, we should be firing, we're going to play the explosion sound. And if we um, should be just yelling at them to halt, we'll play the halt sound. Um, what are you hooked up to? Set actor highlights. Is that character view? Okay. So from the top, what's happening here? 
is every tick, it's going to see if it's time to think again. We've got this lovely little time between thinks thing set up, or we could have created a timer for it. Uh, we then check to see if the person is within 30 meters of the of the guard using vector length. So we take the person's location, subtract from it the uh, the guard's location, and if that uh, that distance, the length of a vector is the distance. Uh, if that distance is less than uh, 30 meters, then we continue onwards. Otherwise, we stop. So if the person is too far away, we simply don't do anything. Uh, we then do a line trace, which is going to um, draw a line through the world. And it can be blocked by walls and boxes and things like that, and balls, apparently. Um, so we do a trace line from the security guard to the player. And if it doesn't hit anything, it returns 1 for time. Uh, if it does hit something, then there's a, a including box in between. Uh, yeah, there's other ways of doing that as well, but this works. So if it had an unobstructed line of sight to the player, then we continue on. Otherwise, we just don't do anything. Uh, and then we check to see if the player is in front of the guard. And we do that using the dot product. That was our big learning point for today. The dot product tells us if something's in front of us or not. And so the dot product goes between the direction we're looking and the normalized displacement vector. So that the direction we're looking is normalized, the displacement vector has to be normalized, and then you dot product the two of them. And if you get a number uh, uh, that's, uh, that's positive, then they're looking, he's looking at you. <laughs> if it's above zero, then that's 180 degrees uh, and you're somewhere in front of him, okay? Um, if the number is negative, that means that you're behind them. If the number is near zero, that means you're off to the sides. And so you pick numbers. Uh, you typically will just print the result of the dot product and walk around and kind of figure out about what range of numbers works. Um, if you're going to implement backstabbing code, you could allow it to backstab if any number is negative, but that would allow you to backstab from the side. And so that kind of feels weird. And so what you do is you'd stab a, a mannequin a bunch of times from different angles and kind of, you know, just look at the numbers that come out and be like, all right, about point, uh, yeah, about point negative point five. You know, you just you just kind of eyeball it and say, okay, from the from point five to one, that's around what works. And so you say if the so when you stab somebody, you dot product your look vector with their look vector, and if it's greater than point five, double damage on a backstab, something like that. Because if you're looking the same way they are and a trace line coming out of your eyes hits them, that means you're behind them, right? These, these are the fundamental building blocks for doing games. And it, in, it involves math, but the math is like, I don't know, like the math isn't, isn't too bad. There's, um, there's just some basic tools, cross product, dot product, uh, vector length. Um, I should probably write that one down too here. These are these are like the, the building blocks that you build your actual game code out of. Um, vector length is actually pretty important too. Um, distance or the length of the so the length of the displacement vector is how far you are away from somebody. The displacement vector is um, uh, position A, position B. So if you want to get the displacement vector of A towards B, like how far A needs to walk to B, the displacement vector is B minus A. So if B is 100, 0, 0. So if B is 100, 0, 0. And A is um, 50, 0, 0. Then the displacement vector of B minus A is 50, 0, 0. Because you need to walk 50 units to the right, right? Maybe I should pick different numbers here. Uh, A is 70. 70 in the x direction, 0 in the y, 0 in the x. 
then you, how far do you need to write? How, how far do you need to walk to the right for A to get to B? If B is at 100, A is at 70, you need to write, you need to walk 30 to the right. All right, so it's just a subtraction. And if you have a y value and an x value as well, let's say this guy is 10 and this guy is 10, then um, you, do, you subtract each component separately. So if a is 30, it keeps randomly. So if a is 30, uh, 0 and 10, then in order to get from A to B, you have to walk, wait, that's that was a 70, wasn't it? Let's start over. Let's say A was, let's say A was 42, okay. So if A is at X is equal to 42, Y is 0, Z is 10, and B is X is 100, Y is 10, Z is 10. How far right, how far east does A need to walk to get to B? What do you guys think? How far does A need to walk to the right to get to B? or if you're uh, in unreal units if it's 58 meters then in unreal units it would be 5800 uh, but yeah just for the math here it's just 100 minus 42 it's 58 how far if so if b is at y is equal to 10 and a is at y is equal to 0 how far in the y direction do you need to walk to get from a to b 10 minus 0 is And if we are 10 centimeters up or 10 meters up, it doesn't matter. I didn't give any units here. If we're 10 meters up and A is 10 meters up, how far do we have to change in the Z direction to get from A to B? Ten minus ten is what? Zero. Okay. So this is the displacement vector. It's it's how far if we if we're starting at A and going to B. How far in each direction do we have to walk? We have to walk 58 units in the x direction and uh, 10 units in the y direction and zero units in the z direction or whatever, I don't know. Okay. And so that's, that's that. And then if you want to see how far away this person is, then uh, you do vector length on that. And so you take the Pythagorean theorem. And it's going to be 58 squared plus 10 squared plus 0 squared quantity square rooted. So uh, 58, oops, 58 plus 10 squared quantity square rooted. So it is 58.8 units away. So B is B is 58.8 units away. You guys see that? So it's 58 east, 10 north. Um, so the total distance is actually 58.8. It's not 68. Um, <laughs> right? If you go. If you go uh, three units east and four units north, then that's five. It's not seven, unless you go the long way. <laughs> so if you go 58 units east and 10 units north, you actually can make that trip in 58.8 units, just a little bit more. Okay. So that's uh, that's vector length. That's what we have here. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Right there. 
So the displacement vector is the difference of the two positions. That's the distance they are. And then you can just say if they're within X number of feet, whatever, meters, centimeters, whatever. Um, if you're within that, play the sound. Otherwise, don't. And uh, I took out the animations because I just want to, these are not hooked up to anything anymore. Uh, so I, I just want to verify that that's what was crashing our Unreal Engine. Uh, I might have to get, do the actual lecture on animations. There we go, yeah. So now it's playing the firing sound. So between 10 and 30, it's yelling at us to stop, stop, stop. And closer, boom, 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 boom. OK. All right, so that is. Um, that is our lecture for today. So your goal for tomorrow is to um, finish getting used to work. And then uh, your next homework assignment will be uh, doing like a security guard or something like that. Okay. So if you've already done the use thing, uh, watch the lecture day and start building that. that that'll be due on Thursday. Okay. So you'll have two days to, you'll have two days to do the security guard here. Let me post the blueprints, which are a bit of a mess. Um, sorry. Um, I can I don't really need this. <laughs> go on. Go on the whole the whole distance over here, huh? No. Um so I'll I'll post this in chunks onto Discord. Uh, wow. That's, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. But the uh the thing, again, is to try and not just recreate the whole thing by just copying what I'm doing. But you have to you have to kind of build it up a chunk at a time, right? And uh, so get this part working, then get the next part working and have it printing the things and, and stuff like that. If you, if you try to just, like, there's a lot of wires, and if you don't hook them up right, then it simply won't work. Um, so... I'll see a bit in court. And there you go. Okay, so I will toss the um, compile, save. Uh, sorry for the crashes. It's kind of weird. Um, it's definitely been a lot less stable than most of the semesters I've taught this. I wonder if 4.26 just has some weird crashing bugs in it. All right, so that's it for today. And uh, so again, finish your use key thing uh, by tomorrow, and then uh, the security guard thing will be due on Thursday. All right, I will see you guys later. And I'll, I'll post I'll post this as well onto Discord.